Jesus bless you, Jesus bless you, beloved. I love you all so much. I hope King Jesus is filling your cup full of peace and joy and fruits of the Spirit. Amen. God is good. He's always good. He is for us and not against us. And he is faithful for what he started in each and every one of us. He is just and faithful to finish. He is the finisher, author, finisher, author, finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, our God is faithful. So he put something on my heart that he wants me to share. That's something that happened in my life, uh, you know, a week or so ago. And uh, dealing with, um, dealing just with, you know, how we are, we are in the world, but not of the world. And, uh, you know, he wants me to share this with you guys because it, it will encourage you, it will edify you and give you understanding. And um, plus it's, it's helping me grow spiritually in my walk. So this is what we do. We're in this together and we share what the Lord puts on our heart to share so we can uh, help set some captives free and get some clarity and understanding. And uh, he wanted me to share you something that happened to me. And as, as I've been learning to die to the flesh, put down my flesh and walk more in the spirit, you know, we learn by trial and error. And thank goodness our God is uh, patient and love kinding and merciful. And um, he's very patient with us. But, you know, God's love language is obedience, and we need to do our best to obey, right? And uh, and so I'm certainly walking in that, and I don't always get everything right, guys. And so um, this isn't, a, you know, a video to condemn anybody, but to help each other grow in the Spirit, right? Because that's what uh, that's what the Holy Spirit wants, you know? He wants us to, to die to the flesh and, and pick up the things of the Spirit so we can uh, be used mightily for God, so we can be a conduit for God, so we can... Um, you know, be usable for God, you know, because there's no power in our flesh, guys. No power. Okay. The anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. There's no anointing in you or I. Okay. The anointing straight comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay. But he is spirit and not flesh. You know, he is righteousness and holiness. And we need to walk that narrow path with the Lord, you know, dying to ourselves daily, sitting down our flesh and picking up the things of the spirit so the anointing can come and fall on us and we can be used mightily by God, right? But we fall short sometimes. And this is a story I'm going to share with you that's something that happened to me a week or so ago. So what had happened is, um, you know, I was going into work and I always share the light and the love of Jesus Christ to others. And I'm always talking about Jesus and guys, I got attacked. Okay. I got attacked where, uh, all these deep and I saw it. See, I saw it spiritually guys. I saw the demonic in this man and this man just turned around out of nowhere and he started cussing me out. He started cussing me out and blaspheming the Lord's name. See, demons don't blaspheme you and me. They hate us, but you know, we are sinners saved by grace. They don't blaspheme me and you. They blaspheme the name of the Lord. They blast the only one and true and living God, right? But they use people to come to attack us, right? So we can... Um, get offended by it or we can uh you know they want to get us in our flesh they want us to react in our flesh okay and um because when we are walking in the flesh there's no salt guys we are tasteless when we're walking in the flesh we are useless when we're walking in the flesh there's no power in the flesh okay it's in the spirit that's where the anointing is and so the enemy will send people to attack you right so it will get us knocked out of the spirit and and get us to react in our flesh and try to handle things in our flesh by being offended by taking it personally um by feeling uh you know personally offended and personally attacked when it's really not the person you know personally attacking us it's the demonic who is blaspheming the one and living god the god of abraham isaac and jacob so this man comes in you know and uh, that I that I work with, and he, I, you know, I just show up at the beginning of work, and I'm just, you know, bringing the light and the joy of Jesus. And this man turns around and he and he attacks me so bad, pointing his finger on my face, saying every cuss word he can, blaspheming Jesus, you know, cursing Jesus, saying the most awful things of blasphemy that you can imagine, and. He went ahead and he went to the area, a different area. And so what I did, guys, is I didn't die to myself. I immediately took it to my flesh, even though I knew better because I could see the demonic immediately. Okay? My spiritual eyes and ears were open. 
praise be to God, but I didn't handle it in the spirit. I immediately took it personal and I followed this guy, right? I followed him into the area and I asked him because I, I took it to my flesh and I was offended. And I said, you know, how dare you? And uh, did you just flip me off? And, and things like that. And the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. And the Holy Spirit began to say, uh-uh-uh, don't you do it. I need you to die to yourself in this situation because there's going to be no power in your flesh. He said, don't you do it. Okay? And so I had to quickly, the, the Holy Spirit had to minister to me and quickly get my eyes off of me, right? Off of myself, off of my feelings, off of my offenses, off of me taking things personal, off of my flesh. He had to get me out of that and back into the Spirit. See, how do I dealt with this immediately in the spirit guys because i saw the demonic in this man i could have cast it out these demons okay by the holy spirit by the power of the holy spirit by the anointing of the holy spirit had i stood in the spirit right and not got off track into my flesh but but i fell short guys i got into my flesh and because of that i wasn't able to cast out those demons and so the holy spirit was beginning to minister to me god was ministering to me and dealing with me on this and this is exactly what the enemy wants us he wants us to get in our flesh in all circumstances because he knows that there's no power okay we cannot set any captives free right when we're in our flesh and it can happen that fast guys i mean it was faster than i could blink my eyes and so the only thing other thing i could do is what when holy spirit was leading me he said go love on him because we know in first corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 through 8 it says love is selflessness love keeps no record of wrongs and holy spirit began to show me how he seen this man right because what the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to do, guys, is quit looking into the natural, but to look into the supernatural, to look into the spirit realm, and to be prepared and ready and vigilant at all times at any given moment, right? Because we don't cast out demons just to uh, be a blessing for ourselves and a blessing for that person, but for blessings for the people that are surrounded by you where they can see that God is real and they can see the power of God manifests right before them. You know, that can bring many souls to God. That can turn an unbeliever into a believer when they see the manifestation and the glory and the power of the Lord right before them. When we're standing in the spirit, casting out um, uh, demons, right? So it's a blessing for those around us as well to set them free. Uh, bringing, you know, souls into the kingdom. That's what we're here for. We are the light of the world, the salt of the world. And so... After all that, I went and found him, and he, this grown man, I mean, he's like 6'4", 200 and whatever some pounds, just totally lost. I went and I showed him love, and the offense immediately went away. I showed him love. Holy Spirit ministered to me, and this six foot four tall man, 200 and something pounds, literally just broke down and cried, literally hugging me so tight crying on on my chest and just let it all out and he says he doesn't know what be, come over him he has no idea where that came from well you should know i should know when we walk with the lord jesus christ we are to walk in the spirit at all times yes we fall short but this is why god says i need you to die to yourself daily so we can have the spiritual eyes to see and the spiritual ears to hear you know what's going what the enemy is doing is killing stealing and destroying and um it was just amazing how holy spirit started to work on me and minister to me so anyway this man this full-grown powerful man that was just blaspheming god was in my chest letting it all out crying see he doesn't know he his spiritual eyes and his spiritual ears are not open so when he said he don't know what has come over him he is closed off to the spiritual realm he doesn't know the demonic okay he doesn't know that he's being used by the enemy so all I did was just love on this man. And because of that love, that planted a seed, that planted a testimony, okay, of the love of Jesus Christ. And he was just blown away by that, okay? But had I walked in the spirit immediately and not took it personal, 
which I should have because I saw spiritually the, 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 the demonic. I could have shut up the enemy and I could have delivered this man right then and there. So Holy Spirit began to speak to me and work on me. And uh, he redeems me in this situation by me being able to walk in love. This man will never forget this, right? But it could have gone a step further by the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit if I was surrendered unto God in the spirit in that moment. But I wasn't. I took it to my flesh immediately, exactly what the enemy wants. And so God began to show me some uh, scriptures and he wants me to share them with you. And we're going to go into Acts 19 verses 11 through 20 guys. And this is about the sons of Sceva. And it says this, God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. So see the anointing comes from God, not us. So that the handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and to the disease. Diseases left them and the evil spirits went out. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus saying, I adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Seven sons of one Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. And the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Listen, I fled out of that house naked and wounded because I stood in my flesh just like the sons of Sceva were in the flesh. The demons said, Jesus I know and Paul I know. Why did they know Paul? Because Paul was completely surrendered, walking in the things of the Spirit. They recognized the anointing of the Holy Spirit in Apostle Paul. And he walked in that. And he was able to set people free. And they knew Jesus, right? They knew the Holy Spirit and filled our Lord and Savior Jesus. Okay, but they didn't know the sons of Sceva. The sons of Sceva were trying to do this in their flesh. The priests were trying to do this in their flesh. And they got nowhere. And the enemy was able to subdue them. So in that moment, when I took it personal, and I called out this guy for flipping me off and cussing me out, taking it personal, okay, right there the enemy subdued me. And there was no deliverance possible for this man. Okay? And so this is what it's showing in this. And this is what God wanted to show me and wanted me to share with you all. And the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? So in that moment, the enemy, I couldn't cast out them devils in that man because they were saying, who are you? Why were they saying, who am I? Because in that moment, I took a personal, I went to my flesh instead of staying surrendered in the spirit. Okay. And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on him and subdued them all out of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to all, both Jews and Greeks who lived in Ephesus and fear fell upon them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was being magnified. Now see, had I right there in work with people around been able to uh, cast out those demons, like I said, look how much of a blessing that would have been for unbelievers standing around. And, uh, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ would have been magnified in this situation. Many also of those who have believed kept coming, confessing and disclosing their practices. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. And they counted up the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So see... I could have set some captives free. Witnesses just standing around if they saw the glory and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ working in me and through me had I been surrendered in, the, surrendered in the spirit in that moment. So God wanted me to share that with you. And he also wanted me to show you Acts. We're going to go to Acts chapter 16, okay? Now this is about Paul going on his journey. And there was a woman with divination spirit that was following them around. And she was chanting, you know, a bunch of stuff to Paul. And it was annoying Paul. But I want you to pay attention here. Acts 16, verses um, 16 through 18. It happened that as we were going to the place of prayer, let me get my glasses on here. New glasses, guys. I love them. It happened that as we were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl having a spirit of divination met us, who was bringing her masters much profit by fortune telling. Following after Paul and us, she kept crying out, saying, these men are bond servants of the Most High God, 
who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for many days. But Paul was greatly annoyed and he turned and said, pay attention here. Paul was greatly annoyed, it says here. And he turned and said to the spirit. He said, he didn't acknowledge the woman. He acknowledged the evil spirit because he was surrendered walking in the Holy Spirit. And so he went straight after the spirit, not the woman. He was annoyed with the demonic spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very moment. See, he didn't get in his flesh. He didn't get annoyed by the girl. He didn't take it out on the girl. He didn't take it personal. He didn't get mad in his flesh and take it out on her. No, he was annoyed with the spirit and he stood in his authority, surrendered in the Holy Spirit. And he, t- and he delivered her of that spirit. Hallelujah. Oh man, this is so important guys to know. This is why we must always do our best to walk in the spirit at all times. Because our enemy is like a roaring lion. Seek him whom he can devour. There is no power. Okay? Our flesh, there is no power. It opposes God and it opposes his will. And his will is to set the captives free. His will is to get souls saved. Amen? And deliver them from demonic spirits. And so we'll, we'll get to where even Jesus deals with this in Matthew chapter 16. It says this, Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 23. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. He didn't say to Peter, get behind me, Peter. He wasn't talking to the flesh. He was talking to the spirit that was hindering Peter. And he said, get behind me, who? Satan. He was dealing with the spiritual spirits. That were blinding Peter in that moment. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are not setting your mind on God's interest but man's. He wasn't taking it out on Peter. He wasn't taking it personal from Peter. He was going straight to the source of the spiritual realm. Because he was completely surrendered to the Holy Spirit. And he took Satan head on. Okay, that is so important. Jesus was completely submitted, completely um, uh, surrendered in the Holy Spirit, okay? And he went after Satan in this situation, something that Peter couldn't see, okay? He didn't go after flesh. He went after the demonic spirit. Hallelujah. And also he wants me to show you the possessed man in Matthew, or sorry, in Mark chapter uh, 5, verses 1 through 6. And we're going to read that, okay? They came to the other side of the sea into the country of the garrisons. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him, and he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Again, we cannot subdue the enemy from our flesh. These people were afraid of this man, right? He was screaming and carrying on, cutting himself, howling, coming, running in and out of the caves. People were petrified of him. People were not, did not know anything about standing in their authority, surrendered unto the Holy Spirit in the will of God to be able to deliver this man. They were scared of him. Right? So they couldn't subdue him with chains or anything because they were relying on their own understanding in their human way not and only seeing the natural and not looking into the supernatural and doing it through God, the Holy Spirit's anointing in them. Okay? Constantly, day and night, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gnashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. You want to know why? Because they knew. 
They saw the Spirit. They saw the living God. They saw the glory of the Holy Spirit, the glory of the Father in Jesus Christ. So they came in there and he bowed down. He knew where the anointing was. The evil spirits know where these where the anointing is and who's carrying it and who is walking completely in the spirit and not in the flesh, just like Jesus. He was walking completely in the spirit, totally submitted into the spirit. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. So they recognized and they saw the spirit that Jesus was operating in. Amen? And that's what Jesus is trying to get us to do. That man ran up to him. Not one time did Jesus fall short in his flesh. He stayed in the spirit and he was able to take care of that demonic spirit and set that man free. Hallelujah. So God wanted me to share this with you guys. He wanted me to show you that it is so important that we learn to grow in him. And we grow in him by the spirit, by reading his word, by praying, by being obedient, by dying to ourself. Okay, by by obeying the Lord, by reading and growing of the things of the spirit, by dying to self daily so that we can be useful for God in his kingdom, kicking down the kingdom of darkness. Okay. We are no use to God if we're going to walk in the flesh. I was no use in that moment coming after that guy from the flesh, demanding answers from him when I should have been surrendered unto the spirit of the living God to cast those demons out. Because my eyes spiritually were open and my ears were spiritually open. But the, but the enemy subdued, subdued me in that moment. And I wasn't able to set this guy free from from these demons okay so this isn't a condemnation on anybody this is uh something that the lord wanted me to share with you all so we can learn and grow from one another and to show you the importance of the anointing the importance of our flesh is nothing our flesh has no power it's the anointing of 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 the holy spirit within us it's the anointing of god is holy spirit within us but we must yield in obedience to the Lord. And the more we yield to the Lord in obedience, the more anointing he will give us. The more authority we can stand in. All these scriptures I just read to you, they never once got in their flesh. It was standing in the authority of God Almighty, the Holy Spirit. Amen? So let me give you a couple more uh, scriptures just to go over this. Ephesians 5, 8 says this, For you were formerly darkness, flesh, But now you are light in the Lord. Spirit, walk as children of light. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 John 2, 6. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Amen. We ought to walk in the same manner as Jesus Christ. And John 15, 4 says this. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. We must obey the Lord. We must yield to the Holy Spirit. We must die to ourselves. Set our flesh down, guys. Okay? In order to have the anointing and to walk in our authority. We must abide in the vine. Remain in the vine, which is Jesus. If we don't. We don't abide in him. We have nothing. We can do nothing without Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus was showing me in that moment. Are we like the starving sons of Sceva? Are we spiritually starving like the sons of Sceva? The Lord Jesus don't want us spiritually starving like the sons of Sceva. He doesn't want us in our flesh. We are useless in our flesh. So I hope that this encourages you. We all fall short. This is not condemnation. This is just learning and edifying. I could have set some that man free of this demonic realm had I abided in the vine in that moment and not my flesh. So I wanted to share this with you all. I hope this encourages you all. Thank you for watching my video. I know this one went a little bit longer, but this was such a powerful revelation, a powerful of understanding of how... We must live a surrendered life unto God 
so he can use us mightily to kick down the kingdom of darkness. Because just like in Acts, just like how fast the enemy, you know, can get us out of our authority in the flesh faster than a blink of an eye. He did it with Peter. And we see that, right? We see that uh, in Matthew 16. But we see how Jesus stood in submission to Father God in Mark chapter 5. And we see how Paul stayed in submission to the Spirit in Acts 16 and Acts 19. Okay? The anointing comes when we yield to the Holy Spirit in obedience, dying to our flesh daily. When we do that and we grow in the Lord, we will be able to cast out demons. Amen? So, let's not be spiritually starving like the sons of Sceva. Let's learn from that, okay? Jesus bless you. I love you. You all have a beautiful, blessed day in the Lord. And I'm so thankful you're watching my videos. I love you all so much. Until next time, stay blessed in our Lord Jesus Christ. I love you so much. Email me anytime if you need uh, prayer or anything. I am here. God bless you all. Love you. Until next time, stay blessed in Jesus. Bye now.